guys. I brought different people from different nationality. So I am from Nigeria and the people I have today, these handsome guys, mm -hmm, they are from India. But the reason is because we all met in Lithuania. So coming together and uh, from different backgrounds, different histories, values, norms, traditions, we are all together, different cultures. So I think it would be a good idea for we to like talk about the country we are in, how we came here, what is happening, the experiences we have. I'll talk about it in the Nigerian perspective and then we'll talk about it in the Indian perspective because I have a lot of Indians that like writing me and Nigerians so this will help. So guys, glad to have you in my channel today. Hello, yeah, Faith. yeah. how are you? I am fantastic, what about you? I'm good. By the way, you look so handsome. Hmm. I don't know. Beauty, beauty lies <laughs> in the eyes of the people. I know, right? <laughs> Alright. Asha, I'm how good. are you? I'm good. Guys, remember this face, right? He, he's a returnee. Asha, we are glad to see you. You look so handsome. Thank you. Guys, you see their head. Their head is like, is like, nee, 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 nee. <laughs> okay, like, guys, we are in Lithuania. Let's talk about Lithuania. First and foremost, I'll start with you, Ash. Mm -hmm. When you got to uh, what was that thing you saw and you felt like, oh, this is different from India? Oh, I come from a desert part of India, so for mm -hmm. me, when I saw the huge piles of snow and extreme cold, that was like the biggest shock for me, from plus 50 to minus 25, it was kind of tragic, I would say. Mm -hmm. And for me, this was one of the most important things which I took a lot of time to adjust. Mm -hmm. like, and secondly, I would say the food. The food oh. varies from, I would say, like in India we have a lot of spicy food, a lot of yeah. different spices, whereas Lithuania we just use the minimum of salt yeah. and pepper and still it's delicious, I would say. Oh, I see. So, Hasha, how about you? The snow, was it like any kind of a... Well, yeah, different? it was a good experience at the starting. Like, um, my first snow, it was like around minus 27. At seven o'clock in the morning, I was going to my exams and all those things. It was, it was really hard to adjust in the start, but mm -hmm. slowly you get used to it. Mm, guys, yeah. for me, my experience, the first time I saw snow was in Georgia. I opened the window and I started crying. It's so stupid. <laughs> Literally, I was crying. And it dawned on me that this never stops, it's like a season, like it falls to a certain month and it stops. And now when I look about it, I feel so stupid. I'm like, did I just do that? Was I crying because of snow? Yeah, baby. This is beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see ya. Okay, okay now, nice. yes, I'm coming to you. Um, how did you find your way here? Because I think, yeah, we all used flight. Nobody checked, by the way. We mm -hmm. all used flight, but how did you find your way here from India? Basically, I just finished my bachelor's and I wanted to do, do my master's. Mm -hmm. I want to study in Europe. And for me, I was searching some countries and Lithuania was one of them. And I took a help of an agency, which now I feel is like, it can be taken, it cannot be taken, it depends upon individual. But if you are a new person who has never been abroad, I would suggest you to take some agency so it becomes easier for you. So I contacted one agency and the process is quite smooth, but at the same time, a little bit expensive if you are on the middle class of side. Mm -hmm. And uh, everything is not so tough. You just have to have those pointers. I, I prepared a, a uh, a sheet where I, I wrote all the things, the essentials, and from the whole visa process, like from the starting to the beginning, I wrote each and every pointer about the bank balance, about the accounts, about the apostles, where the embassy is, how much time it takes. I also took advice from the people who were living here, mm -hmm. went to some groups, had a chat with them, and this is how I, I, I reached here. I see. So, Hasha, in the previous video we had, we talked about how you came here and everything. Um, so guys, this is like a different perspective of someone else that came, how he came, he talked about it, which Hasha on his own talked about it as well. So why we are coming here, what are those things you prepared for? In terms of clothes, like from India, what are those things you carried? Well, uh, the thing about clothes is yeah, that clothes, you can just buy it when you come here, don't bring clothes from India. It's because 
first of all, you have a limited uh, luggage uh, weight when you come from a flight. It's like around 23 to 30 kilos. So just buy your normal clothes from India, right? And you can buy the winter clothes right over here because mm -hmm. it's, it's much better and if you don't have to pay extra. Uh, right. Uh, extra one back. most important tip I would like to give to your users would be like the Indian people who are watching is to not buy any winter clothes from India because they won't work here. I see. They won't work in this kind of temperature because mm -hmm. the material which we use in India is made for India. Whereas I also did the same mistake, bought a very expensive mm -hmm. clothing from India. But in a month I realized that that's useless mm -hmm. and I had to spend here also to buy a new cloth. I see. So guys, uh, these two handsome guys you're seeing here are already done with studies. Like they've graduated already. So uh, Yasha, I want to come to you. What do you have to say about the system of education in Lithuania? The system of education here is quite, quite systematic. Uh, mm -hmm. Everything is very clearly explained to you. Mm -hmm. the, the, the studies are on the lighter side, more on the practical side. They will not emphasize more on theoretical studies as we do much in India. Here we are more emphasized on practical learning. There will be a lot of project work. There will be a lot of activities. You will have to do research. You will have to make your own understanding of your own knowledge and, and you have to implement that. And by that way, you learn much quicker, much easier, and you understand the knowledge, what you need to implement for your future job role or the requirements for the company needs. So they prepare you good enough. And then it's up to your capabilities how you succeed in that. Mm -hmm. No, uh, Asha, I want to come to you. Before you graduated from the university, we all know that uh, we all had like guys, that's what they call master thesis if you're coming. Like prior to before I came here, I never had a clue anything like thesis, whatever. No, no, no. I didn't. So I'm reaching here, it was like boom, a disaster for me. So Hasha, I want to come to you. Regards to this master's thesis, you wrote it, like we all wrote it, but this is like a personal question I'm directing to you. To Indians coming, apart from Indians, Nigeria, anybody that was seeing this video. What is that one thing you want to tell them? Because everybody, they are coming for studies, okay? Mm -hmm. And they have to be aware that be it bachelor, be it masters, they are in the thesis to write. Mm -hmm. What do you have to tell them in regards to Well, uh, if you're coming for masters, so I would uh, presume, assume that, you know, you had done your bachelor thesis back in India. Whereas mm -hmm. uh, when I came here for my bachelor's, uh, I did my diploma. Mm -hmm. So over there also I completed, I done my thesis. Mm -hmm. So mostly Indians have a normal idea, but the thing over here about thesis which is different is your thesis can't be common. It should be one and the only thesis which are you making. Mm -hmm. It should not be another du duplicated or from the same topic anywhere in the world, mm -hmm. maybe. Yeah. You have your professors who help you to guide through your research topics. You can do research papers in the end. The thesis is very good. Uh, normally, before thesis, a previous semester, mm -hmm. they try to help you out by doing term paper. Mm -hmm. So, over there, when you write half of your thesis, mm -hmm. you know, around 25 or 30 pages, mm -hmm. and you, know, you work with that your professor and they give you marks. Then, after the term paper, they give you a choice. Either you can continue your term paper, which can be converted into your thesis. So write more 40 pages more in that term paper and it can be your entire thesis mm -hmm. with further research mm -hmm. or you can choose one topic in term paper and you can choose different topic in your thesis it totally depends upon you this is the only thing which is different from india to your in india you directly write your thesis over here they give you term paper and the thesis oh okay thank you so much Anna. now yes i'm coming to you so while we are studying i presume there have been like some kind of job you did at the student for sure, yeah. So can you not give us like, we at that time you had like horrible jobs. I think everyone must experience those kind of horrible jobs because <laughs> know, right? that's the part of the struggle when you are abroad by yourself, by, mm -hmm. by, by your own means. I did one, like I did quite a few jobs I would say. I was working in a restaurant as a dishwasher. Mm -hmm. I would say, I thought in the beginning, in the initial stages, I would be, like it won't be so hard for me, but uh, working for 12 hours standing there and just washing piles of dishes like it's kind of a hectic job guys so uh, another job i did was like part-time bartender which was working behind the bar not like in the bar again it was a difficult job i would say as it requires a lot of uh, patience and a lot of strength strength kind of a work which was always doing like rushing from one place one station to another station 
and another job which I did was like a prep chef so again it involved like as the this term is self-explanatory prep chef is like cutting the vegetables cutting mm -hmm. all sort of uh, things and, and it's, it's kind of a tough job but then again if you're ready to devote yourself into the, that, that uh, kind of a job then only do it otherwise it becomes quite complicated but again it depends upon how much you are willing to put yourself up how much you are hard working in that like that's all depends upon the person to person mm -hmm. thank you so much let me continue you know people I get in the and director and be like, Madam, I want to come and work. I don't want to study. Mm -hmm. Now, in this regard, what would be what do you want to say to them? Those of them that they don't just want to come to school, they want to come directly from uh, India to come and work here, but they don't have like any certification. Well, yeah, that's the thing. Um, first of all, if you want to come to work over here, you should be highly qualified. Mm -hmm. That's the most important criteria mm -hmm. because. Um, the government doesn't hire people, uh, give their visas just for, uh, you know, normal jobs. You should be either managerial level or something like a developer or something where, mm -hmm. where the position is either senior or with a good five or six year experience. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you don't have any experience and you just want to work, it's next to impossible that they will give you work TRP. Why? Because they look for highly essential workers because other than that normal workers are available over here mm -hmm. so why would they give visas and you know because mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that's the scenario so oh, make sure you. you're good with mm -hmm. your job yeah thank you so much uh what um yes sorry their name is like <laughs> <laughs> i know <laughs> yeah so yes what do you have to say in regards to cost of living Cost of living depends upon person to person. I would say if you're a student, it's mm -hmm. not so expensive. I myself live with, I guess, so 200 euros a month. Okay. I was getting in the dormitory. Or? In the dormitory, like oh. it depends if you're living in a dormitory. Like for me, I had a 200 euros. Like I had a scholarship, kind of a scholarship, and I had some other scholarships. So mm -hmm. I was getting around 200 euros, and I was paying like 90 euros for the rent, and rest of the money I was trying to just like spend cautiously carefully the money and it depends but usually if you are earning here or if you are like if you are doing some kind of a part time job or something to have a normal stable life I would say if you are not also adding to the point that you are not living in the dorm I think one would require to have at least around 600 euros to 700 to have a sustainable life not to have like a lavish life I would say for being lavish I would say maybe you would need around 900 to 1000 euros because usually Food is not so expensive, I would mm -hmm. say. For the Indians, I would say vegetarian food is not so expensive. Mm -hmm. You can get potatoes or vegetables for very cheap prices, even eggs for cheap prices. But again, living is expensive here, guys. At the same time, transportation, buses, if you're okay using buses, it's good. If you're not, taxis and everything is kind of expensive. Social life is expensive. So better set your priorities before coming. And that's all. Yeah. yeah. So that connects to the question I wanted to ask Hasha. So how much do you think an Indian should prepare, like approximately, mm -hmm. should prepare when coming to Lithuania for studies? So monthly budget around 300 to 350, that person should be fine, you know. So normally a dorm rents up to 150 for a single room mm -hmm. in most of the places in Vilnius and Kavan School. Mm -hmm. So 150 and just catch 100 euros for groceries and other extracurricular activities. So 300, 350, they should live a proper life. But if you want apartments and all those things, uh, it's a different scenario because uh, Vilnius is the capital, so mm -hmm. our apartments are kind of expensive. Whereas in Kaunas, for the same price, just imagine if you're looking for an apartment for uh, 300 or 400 euros, in Kaunas you can get a lavish apartment, whereas in Vilnius you can get a small uh, one-bedroom apartment. Mm -hmm. So yeah, different. It, it's it's a big difference between both the. Uh, cities and obviously it depends on your university too. Mm -hmm. So if you just want to live in dormitory and just live a student life, 350 should be fine. Mm -hmm. Other than that, then you can decide how much you want to spend. Okay, exactly. So now, guys, uh, we have like different cities. Uh, we have the we have Venice, we have uh, Clapedia, we have Kaunas. The other ones I can't really pronounce them because they're like hey, uh, you know. But uh, looking at it, this. Uh, cute guys, they were encounters, why me, myself, I was in Venus, so it's like, 
we we at the time the way we are going to talk about the rent and the money and everything is that is what you just heard from them. So now yes, I want to come to the